Six weeks into the war against Hamas, the focus for Israel remains the same. The first goal is to de destroy Hamas, and the second goal is to bring back our hostages. The Israeli Defense Forces reporting raiding the luxury homes of top Hamas officials, where they found weapons and, quote, eliminated combatants, releasing videos like this. These are explosives. Vest with explosives. We have hand grenades. Offering what they call proof of vast tunnel systems beneath Al Shifa Hospital. This chaff was in a sheltered area inside the hospital under a car that was full of weapons, ready for forces that came near the hospital. The evacuation of Al Shifa ongoing, though dozens lay dead underneath these blankets outside the hospital. And in the north, an alleged bombing by Israel of a school turned shelter. Bodies lay scattered between the desks in what was once used as a classroom at the Al Fahura school in the north. One of the many snapshots of the horrors of a war that appears to be losing support. But the well over 11,500 deaths now, we estimate over, around two thirds are amongst women and children. We've had the deaths of over 100 humanitarian workers repeated attacks on health care and schools. President Biden in a new op-ed in the Washington Post doubling down on support for both Ukraine and Israel, responding to calls for a ceasefire writing to Hamas's members, every ceasefire is time they exploit to rebuild their stockpile of rockets, reposition fighters, and restart the killing by attacking innocents again. A negotiated brief pause in the fighting, uh, I think would be a good thing and I would strongly support. A ceasefire, meaning an end to Israel's campaign against Hamas, I don't support, and neither does the president. Still, others argue anything short of a ceasefire guarantees this brutal war will continue into the foreseeable future. I'm Christine Frizzell reporting.